In today's video, we're going to talk about how linear algebra can give us a very thorough understanding of certain topics in ordinary differential equations. These topics are typically disjoint in the eyes of many students because their background in linear algebra is usually not mature enough to really apply it and see where it's occurring in their later ordinary differential equations classes or their ordinary differential equations classes are more applied and perhaps they're not emphasizing the theory which is largely coming from linear algebra that is underpinning a lot of what they're discussing. This video is hopefully going to help bridge these two but not only that help you appreciate either side of this. Perhaps you're quite strong in linear algebra and maybe your ordinary differential equations is lacking in motivation and insight or perhaps you're really killing it on the ordinary differential equation side, but really are missing the underlying theory. So today's video is definitely going to improve this bridge that lies between these two subjects. This is part one of two on a series of videos and is partly motivated, well, is primarily motivated by the Ronskin, which is a topic which is covered in ordinary differential equations in any standard course in the subject will contain some discussion of the Ron skin. And this is where we start to see remnants of linear algebra appear and it's not clear at all why. And that's typically because there are many results in linear algebra or many definitions or concepts that are just not well understood. The next and final reason is that linear algebra is by far the most important subject you'll ever learn in your undergraduate mathematics education. And in fact, some of the theorems that are covered in linear algebra are perhaps the most important theorems that exist in mathematics. If you, if you think about it thoroughly, the really only subject we understand in mathematics is linear algebra. If you take something like calculus, calculus is really just forcing linear algebra onto nonlinear things. If you take some smooth function, let's say like a cubic, to understand its slope, you're not actually understanding the slope of a cubic, you're understanding the slope of a line which approximates the cubic, namely you take the slope of a tangent line. So what you're doing is forcing linear algebra on the cubic and then understanding that linear algebra there. Similarly, if you were understanding differentiable manifolds, so you wanted to understand a sphere, what you would do is approximate it by a tangent plane and then vary that tangent plane over the sphere and that is what's referred to as the tangent bundle. So again, we've taken a highly non-linear object like a sphere and approximated it by a linear object in order to get an understanding of it. In the course of this video, we're going to review concepts like bases, what a vector space is, linear independence, and see how that can gather information and insight in the subject of ordinary differential equations. Now, if you've if you're familiar with these definitions already, then you still may get a lot out of it because you, you'll get to see my interpretation of things. And I really try to emphasize in, in almost everything I do, where is the linear algebra? Of course, not everything is linear algebraic. Quadratics are not linear algebraic, but typically what you can do is see it through some lens of linear algebra in a hope to get some insight. Okay, it's enough chit chat, let's get into it. Okay, so before we do anything fancy and cover any advanced concepts, let's first get the following straightforward. So we'll consider the second order ordinary differential equation, which is given by y double prime plus p of x y prime plus q of x y to the m equals zero. Now this ODE is said to be linear if this exponent m is less than or equal to one. So if we consider the ordinary differential equation y double prime plus 2xy prime plus 3x squared y equals zero, then this is a linear differential equation because the m is equal to one. If we consider the differential equation y double prime plus 2xy prime plus 3x squared y cubed equals zero, however, then this is not a linear differential equation because m is equal to three. Now this is the common heuristic that students have in their head when trying to determine whether an ordinary differential equation does happen to be linear. And while this definition is certainly correct, 
The purposes of this video and for later purposes will want a deeper insight into the meaning of linearity here. One thing to bear in mind is that the word linear is used in many, many subjects, in particular in the subject of linear algebra. So whenever the word linearity is used, linear algebra should in some way or another be present in the discussion. So if it's not clear, you should try to dig it up and see what insights can be gained from doing so. Okay, so since linear algebra is one of the most beautiful subjects in the world, let's just remind ourselves of some of the concepts. So whenever we're studying an area of mathematics, we need to identify two things. What are the objects and what are the maps between these objects? So in linear algebra, the objects that we study are vector spaces and the maps between them are linear maps. So recall that a vector space is a set V such that if we have two vectors U and V in this vector space, then the sum of them is also a vector in this vector space. So if u and v are in v, then u plus v is in v. This is referred to as vector addition. The second condition is that if v is a vector in v, and lambda is some real scalar, then lambda times v is in v. This is referred to as scalar multiplication. So to sum up what we have here, a vector space is a set V which is closed under vector addition and closed under scalar multiplication. Now I'm not going to talk about linear maps in this video. If you want to understand what linear maps are, you can go back to some of my earlier videos where I have some discussion of linear maps. In particular, I give a discussion of why the definition of a linear map is obvious given the definition of a vector space. So if you if you have a hard time remembering the definition of linear maps, I would 100% recommend checking out those videos. We'll have them linked in the cards and the description box down below. Okay, so now that we've reminded ourselves of what the main objects of linear algebra are, namely vector spaces, we can further remind ourselves of one of the most important concepts of linear algebra, namely linear independence. So suppose we have a set of vectors v1 through vn. We'll say that these vectors are linearly independent if the equation lambda1 v1 plus all the way through to lambda n vn equals zero has only the trivial solution for the scalars, namely the lambda1 through lambda n are zero. A way to understand linear independence is that linear independence reflects new linear information. If I was to take two vectors which are scalar multiples of each other, they wouldn't have any new information from the point of view of a vector space. But if I took two vectors which were orthogonal or perpendicular, then they would have two separate pieces of linear information. They would be linearly independent. Now, of course, I don't need to have orthogonality to have linear independence, but linear independence really harkens at the point that the vectors contain n bits of information. Now, a set of linearly independent vectors v1 through vn is said to form a basis for a vector space if every vector can be written as a linear combination of such vectors. And this is really the beauty of linear algebra. It's really the remarkable fact about vector spaces, which is that any element in the vector space, which is a priori an infinite set, can be entirely encapsulated in a finite set of data. Namely, if you give me these n vectors, then I can tell you every single vector in the vector space. So I've reduced some massive infinite set to a very small finite set. So now begs the question, well, what does this have to do with ordinary differential equations? It's nice to know all these facts about linear algebra, but the point of the video is to discuss the application to understanding and gathering deeper insight into ordinary differential equations. So now bearing these definitions in mind, let's give a more nuanced definition or a more refined definition of what it means for a differential equation to be linear. So we'll say that an ordinary differential equation is linear if the set of solutions form a vector space. So if I have one solution and another solution and I add them together, that will also be a solution. 
Or if I take a solution and then scale it by some real number, that subsequent function will also be a solution. So to test our understanding of this concept, let's show that the differential equation y prime plus xy equals zero is linear in the sense that the set of solutions forms a vector space. So let y1 and y2 be two solutions to this ordinary differential equation, and we'll take lambda1 and lambda2 to be real scalars. We need to show that if we add two solutions, we get a solution, and if we scale a solution, we get a solution. So in particular, it suffices to show that lambda1 y1 plus lambda2 y2 is a solution. So let's compute lambda 1 y1 plus lambda 2 y2 prime plus x lambda 1 y1 plus lambda 2 y2. Now if we differentiate lambda 1 y1 plus lambda 2 y2, that will give us lambda 1 y1 prime plus lambda 2 y2 prime, since the derivative is linear. Then we'll get lambda 1 xy1 plus lambda 2 xy2, just by expanding. And then if we factor out the lambda 1, we'll get lambda 1 y1 prime plus xy1. And factoring out the lambda 2, we get lambda 2 y2 prime plus xy2. But since both y1 and y2 are solutions, we have lambda 1 times 0 plus lambda 2 times 0, so we must have the result being 0. So we've now looked at certain definitions in linear algebra, such as the definition of a vector space, linear independence, and a basis, and so forth. And in particular, given that understanding of linear algebra, we've looked at a more refined definition for an ordinary differential equation to be linear. But it's not clear yet why anyone would care about this more refined definition. It seems more complicated, and it doesn't seem to give us anything fruitful. So now what we want to do is actually discuss how this refined understanding can be useful when it comes to solving ordinary differential equations. So let's consider the differential equation y double prime minus y equals zero. Two obvious solutions to this differential equation are of course y1 of x is equal to e to the x and y2 of x is equal to e to the minus x. But now a natural question arises, which is how do we find all solutions and how do we know if we have all solutions? Well, the first thing to observe is that the equation y double prime minus y equals zero is linear. So as we said before, the set of solutions forms a vector space. And in particular, if we have f1 through fn being linearly independent solutions and Suppose further that they span the vector space of solutions, then they'll form a basis of the set of solutions, and in particular, all solutions will be given by linear combinations, i.e. any solution of the ordinary differential equation can be written as a sum from i equals one to n of lambda k f k. Okay, so returning back to our given linear differential equation here, y double prime minus y equals zero, Let's suppose for the moment that e to the x and e to the minus x happen to be linearly independent. Now the order of the ordinary differential equation, so the highest number of derivatives appearing in the differential equation is of course 2. And so all solutions are going to be given by linear combinations of e to the x and e to the minus x because the order is going to be related to the dimension of the vector space. So for us, we have an order two differential equation, so the vector space will have dimension two. So we have a two-dimensional vector space with two linearly dependent vectors. So the vectors e to the x and e to the minus x form a basis for the set of solutions to this ordinary differential equation. And in particular, all solutions are gonna be given by y of x is equal to lambda one e to the x plus lambda two e to the minus x. So given this discussion, what we've done is we've looked at the problem of finding all solutions to a linear ordinary differential equation. 
and then reduced that to simply determining the linear independence of a set of solutions. Now, the problem of finding all solutions a priori to a linear differential equation seems intractable. It seems extremely difficult and almost impossible. But the problem of determining linear independence to a set of solutions, well, that should be just straightforward linear algebra. And in fact, in the subsequent video, what we're going to look at is a, as a tool to understand linear independence of solutions. And that's referred to as the Ronskian. <laughs>